Hey guys, we're out at a small food plot today. Today we're going to cover the basics of soil testing and we're also going to cover two of the most important questions I get around fertility and we're going to cover the basics of fertility so you can grow some great food plots and some great plants. First thing we're going to do today is do a soil test. It's a majorly overlooked, make sure you do do this. We're going to make sure we know what the pH is and we're going to know what nutrients are needed. If you don't do this, your plants aren't going to grow healthy. You're going to be spending a lot of money and wasting a lot of time. So we want healthy plants, we want the right pH, and we want the right nutrients put down. And our soil test is going to get us that information. So you just got your soil test back, and now we know where to start with our nutrients. Depending what we're going to plant, um, certain, certain plants are going to need P and K and a pH adjustment. Certain plants will need nitrogen and certain ones don't. And we're also going to cover the two most important questions I get, which is discussions on nitrogen, questions on nitrogen, how to apply it, which plants need it. And the second one is the basics of how much do I put down, um, what all these numbers mean, and then maybe even a third thing would be the pH adjustment and how to do that. So there's certain plants that love nitrogen and there's certain plants that create nitrogen. Some of the plants that love nitrogen would be corn, brassicas, rye, cereal grains, winter wheat, and we're going to want to put plenty of nitrogen down on those plants. There's other plants that actually create nitrogen. Some of the most common plants you're going to encounter that actually create nitrogen would be soybeans, clover, alfalfa, um, winter peas, and any legume basically is going to fix a lot of nitrogen, and that is a real benefit of those plants. Nitrogen is a gas. It's different than the, the other two fertilizers, P and K. So nitrogen is a gas, and this example is called urea. And it's a granulated form. And people all the time ask me, how do I apply this? Well, since it's a gas, we want to get this on the ground, and it has to be incorporated into the soil. One option is, is to do it 24 hours before rain. But a big problem with nitrogen is if you let it sit on the ground for longer than that, it'll evaporate because it is a gas. Some ways to keep your nitrogen from evaporating would be to get a treatment on there and you'd have to do that from the co-op. You get a treatment like agartane or nitrane. The other thing you can do is get smart nitrogen which has a polymer coat. The other methods that you see that aren't real practical, but you'll see people dragging anhydrous through their field, you're not probably going to do that, but that's a very common and cheap way to apply nitrogen. The other way to do it is to get those plants to produce it for you, those legumes, and you plow those up and that actually created nitrogen. Some, some of those legumes are actually creating 150 to 200 pounds of nitrogen in extreme examples per acre. So um, we want to make sure we get this treated if it's going to sit on the surface. If this is going to sit on the surface and sit in the sun for two or three days, it's going to be gone and we don't want to waste our money. So we're going to disc it up or we're going to treat it or we're going to work on growing plants that produce nitrogen. Those are some of the methods. This example of nitrogen is actually urea. This bag right here is 4600 and this is a dry form of nitrogen. Urea is 46 units per 100 pounds with no P and no K. So this is the most potent form of dry nitrogen you can get. And also to clarify, you've got your nitrogen, and this is your phosphorus, and this is your potassium. The second question I get all the time is, what fertilizer do I put down, how much? Well, first off, our soil test is gonna tell us how much we put down. And then, what do all these numbers mean is the question I get all the time. So. You have 13, 13, 13. So per 100 pounds, it's got 13 units or pounds of nitrogen, 13 units of phosphorus, and 13 units of potassium. And that's really important because if this were, for example, 26, 26, 26, we'd have to put down half as much to attain the, the rate per acre that we want. So Basically, this is a percentage per 100 pounds, 13% nitrogen, 13% phosphorus, and 13% potassium. And that's really important to know that this is actually simple mathematics that you can equate uh, to put down to meet the requirements of your soil. So going into what P and K 
at a very basic level is or what it does. It's other nutrients for the plant. The potassium is going to be incredibly important for le your legumes. Um, nitrogen and all of them will be important for something like a brassica. You know, corn will be more on the nitrogen and the phosphorus end of things, but we want to make sure the correct levels of both phosphorus and potassium are applied based on our soil report. Your soil test is going to come back and it's going to give you a pH level. A lot of times in the Midwest it's going to be acidic and we're going to want to raise that pH to somewhere between a 6.5 and, and a 7. And that the soil report will actually tell you how much lime is needed. It's going to vary a little bit when you have pelletized lime. Uh, pelletized lime is going to act very quickly. You can use less of it, uh, but it only lasts one year. Your other method is to use an ag lime which you're going to put on at a, a far higher rate. The co-op's going to help you with that based on your soil report, but that's going to last between four to seven years. So there's two methods there. The reason you want your pH corrected is so your plants can utilize the nutrients out there. All those other things we talked about, the N, P, and the K, your plants will be able to utilize those nutrients. Without the proper pH, it binds those nutrients up and those plants are not able to absorb those. So don't skip your soil sample. Make sure you get the proper rates of N, P, and K down, depending on the plants you want. Get your pH corrected so you have some great, lush, awesome food plots to hunt over this fall.